So for those of you who haven't met, we haven't met, I'm Ian Walker. I've run Lucas Foundation for getting on six years now. Uh, tonight, tonight, the best way to describe our conversation is we always hope for diversity in a room. And so in Laura, who's a recent addition to the research committee for the foundation, we have someone who uh, pragmatic, engaged in the real politics, seeing things up close. And, and what, who do you add to a pragmatist? Potentially, you had an anarchist, and so he he may back away from it, but not on grounds of inaccuracy. Um, so for tonight, you'll get about two minutes of me. Hopefully, you get about 15, 20 minutes of them, and then a whole lot of you as we open up to questions. Um, as a little grounder, uh, six years ago now, when I spoke to Luca, we did wonder if um, anyone would talk to us. Uh, a lot of democratic reform does involve telling people their baby's ugly and seeing if they still want to talk to you. Uh, and our constant message has been, we go to governments and just say, tell us what's hard, tell us what will get stuck politically. Um, this year, we were fortunate enough to have a government say, we've got something that might be hard. Um, we're thinking of having a nuclear waste storage facility uh, in the middle of South Australia. Would you like to host that conversation? Um, so that was degree of difficulty 11 uh, along the way. For our sins, you definitely see the capacity of people to have a coherent conversation. Um, we've worked with Infrastructure Victoria. We're working with a range of councils. Uh, we're working with local government Victoria who have the chance for a group of citizens in Geelong to actually decide how they want to be democratically represented. And it's something where the minister said, you are not limited by the laws as they stand today. So we actually are closer to this transformational opportunity. So for tonight, the conversation is this, this balance of uh, Laura's written very much recently on where you see some of the flaws and balance that against Luca in my first week when I said, what do you want, what are my writing instructions for this job? I hope you remember what you said. You said, I want to get rid of the Senate <laughs> for a start. So with that balance set up, uh, we'll hand over to Luca and Laura in conversation and you'll see me in about 15, 20 minutes and we'll share questions around, hopefully to extend the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it on. That's right. uh, thank you from me. Thank you for all coming. Um, <clears throat> Uh, of course, uh, we acknowledge the original custodians on these land and waters, particularly these waters. And um, we acknowledge also Hassels. Thank you very much, uh, Hassels, for uh, uh, this great premises, as you can see, and the various directors that are here, Ken Maher and others. Um, now, this is, <coughs> this is meant to be a bit of a Christmas party, so it was somewhat, I was kind of st suggesting, well, Let's not make it too scripted. We don't want to make it too heavy. But I think there's a sort of a sense of, of oh, there's a political heaviness in the air. Um, and, and, you know, I won't mention that man over there. But I think that that has been the catalyst for people to think about how you might want to do politics differently. Um, <clears throat> Laura, I'm so pleased Laura's joined us. She's given us so much credibility along with, yeah, yeah thank you, along with Nick Greiner and Jeff Gallup on our research, Jeff chairs our research committee with, with uh, Nick Greiner, who are both here, and uh, Martin Krieger and Carolyn, uh, Carolyn uh, Hendricks, of course, from ANU. Uh, so there's five people on the research committee, and I have two original uh, founding directors with me here tonight. The, the two that we started with, there was a third, the fourth that sort of dropped away, uh, Lynn Carson here and Kathy Jones. And it is, it is 10 years, it is 10 years to the day that we had our first public meeting up the road here uh, under the egg, which is no longer there. And so we've been sort of going at this for a while uh, and it's sort of kind of been building momentum. Um, but as I say, that, that that man, as much as anything, uh, has, has created a, a degree of interest right now. Laura has published two quarterly essays in the last four years, because 2012 was the first one. The first was called Great Expectations, and, and the second is called P 
political amnesia in 2015. Um, because Ian has started suggesting I'm a prov provocateur, I'll go with that. And I suggest, um, <coughs> well, Laura suggests that our expectations generally of our political class are, are quite high and we need to lower them. And I'm saying, well, how far low <laughs> do we need to go? <laughs> First question. Well, well, uh, well, I don't know that I'm actually saying we need to lower them as such, Luca, but I think what we have to recognise is... Is that working? Yeah. Um, I, what I was trying to sort of say is uh, actually um, we're expecting politicians to be able to do things that they can't do. Um, so the question becomes, you know, what, what do we want them to be able to do and therefore what does that imply for the powers we give them? So, you know, f for those who haven't read the essay, um, it's basically saying we deregulated the economy, um, but we didn't stop and think about the fact that if you do re deregulate something it means that the people who run it can't regulate it. Um, so therefore they can't, they they've, they've lost all their levers, um, as, as Paul Keating used to say. So you're stuck with a position where they can't actually control house prices or the exchange rate or whatever, but that the political language didn't change to match that, that we're still basically, you know, politicians still sort of say, I will make this right, I will fix this market, I will fix this price. Um, and so that's the thing. I, I don't think we should lower our expectations, but I think we need to understand what actual capacity politicians have to influence events. Then, then I, would, I would sort of suggest in, in response, part of the problem with the way we uh, affect our political classes through this adversarial contested space where there is, by demands, there is a necessity to outbid the other in a way. Um, it's very difficult to, to, to get away from that. And so uh, I, I see that as actually a systemic problem. <coughs> yeah. And so if I can say what I, what I like about you know, and this is thanks to Carson and the other. What I like about this notion of a citizen's jury or a random recruitment sortition as a model to affect another type of political class is that it actually has the, the, the potential to be like, uh, like an Uber in the taxi industry. It, it has the potential to be a disruptor and an enabler. So it can enable public transportation, just as it's currently doing now, but it, has, it is a real threat to the existing public transportation in terms of taxis. So I think you cannot, in this, this uh, exercise that we're involved in in New Democracy, I don't think you can actually propose an alternative which isn't a real alternative. It has to be considered to be a real alternative. Otherwise, it's, it's just seen as a sort of a, a, um, a potential a, a, a supplement. I know Ian talks about just compliment. Well, this, it, when Ian talks about me being an anarchist, I'm not an anarchist. We're not anarchists. We want good government. We see this is potentially a better way of affecting the good government. And in the meantime, you can have these citizen juries that, that complement, that enable the political class to understand what actually the community wants. But at the same time, if they don't really get their act together, they can really disrupt it and become the alternative political class. Mm. Um, so I've got a few thoughts about that. Um, right so um, uh, I, I think citizen juries are a really f fascinating idea. Now, but I put them in a different context, which is basically if you move away from thinking about the institutions of politics and you think about uh, politics as, a, as an information market and... Uh, and you extend it beyond political parties, though they're obviously a part of it, and you extend it to the media uh, and to the sort of uh, the stimuli that are operating in the political system. I think, um, I think that's quite a fruitful way, certainly for me, to think about this. What's, what, what's happened in the last 20 or 30 years? Um, and you're seeing this, uh, I'm, I'm sort of not smug about what's happened in America, but it's sort of interesting because the Americans and the American media, for example, 
you know, really think that they've sort of so sophisticated in the way they cover elections and everything, and they've, they're just now in this complete state of shock about how did, you know, how did we not see this coming? And it's something that we in Australia, in the media, have had to think about for the last 10 years because we often get it wrong. Uh, but um, I suppose if you think about, uh, I, I would quote uh, Rod Cameron, who was the pollster for the ALP, uh, in this process. Now, I understand that citizens' juries aren't, uh, aren't polls. I, I do understand that. But it's interesting. He will talk about how um, the whole idea of focus groups became sort of corrupted along the way, that you used to go into a, a focus group and listen to what people were saying and, um, and then say, OK, well, this is what people are thinking. What do they want us to be talking about? Um, but it eventually became corrupted so that you would just actually feed back at people these sort of key messages that they were hearing. So you, you weren't actually adding any value along the way. Um, so I suppose uh, I sort of think about it in those terms that um, we've basically got a dysfunction in the sort of information cycles going into politics and coming out of politics as well. Um, now, yes, it's very um, aggressive and antagonistic in election campaigns, um, but you know, politics is going on all the time now. It's not just during campaigns. We're in the age of permanent campaigning. And um, if it would probably not be as bad if the whole media cycle and technology wasn't changing, but I... I I'm sort of at a bit of a loss about how you deal with that, um, where you've got two things happening, where there's a, you know, this con there's this need to have these really consistent, simple messages and not go off script, as far as politicians say it, but there is so much more noise around um, a around any particular issue, and we've seen a few cases of that in the last week, you know, where some issue takes off, and trying to actually just keep it to what the actual issue is, is quite difficult because everybody's yelling so much. And it's, and it's not just the politicians who are yelling anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah but we, we, we look. We look to. I'm louder than, than she is. <laughs> you've just got I to, don't you've just, want to be louder than she is. You've just got to practice your nightclub <laughs> thing. <laughs> <don't> you? <coughs> <coughs> you know, I, I see... You, you, I'm somewhat pleased that you say you're at a bit of a loss. You're admitted that you're a bit of a loss. I mean, I'd like to suggest I'm, I'm a bit of a loss too. Uh, what what gives me hope is this uh, alternative way of affecting political representation. And I know that from Nick here and Jeff, and they, they <coughs> in particular, you know, they they look to moderate my my, my views on this. Uh, but I really think the system is kind of reached its use-by date, and uh, and I think it's 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 fairly plain in the way the public generally are seeing politicians, with all due respect to them, their their trusted position is dropping every year, and it's not getting. I can't see it turning around. And you just cannot help but, s when you hear a politician and you know the story, and I've heard it so many times from even ex-politicians that they say they're so glad to be out of the game because they can now have a conversation with their friends and their friends will look at them as if they're actually talking honestly. That's half the problem with this theatre. You know, we, we are, we've got a bit of a charade happening here, this manufactured differences. We need to build a more trusted body, body politic. And I, I go on and on and about, about this, but that's at the very core of what we're trying to do. Now, you say, Laura, Malcolm Turnbull is actually, as some, some journalist said this week, putting one, the, the government is putting one foot in front of the other, and it actually is achieving, and will probably by the end of this year, this week, uh, get through the legislation that, you know, the major legislation that they were hoping to get through. Great, that's all good. You know, this is this is indicative of a, of a government that is moving forward. That, sorry to use that phrase, uh, overused. But I just see it as suboptimal, absolutely suboptimal. We could do so much better, and and we ju and, and and I and I, of course, we look to the U.S. now, and just see how far that theatre has gone, and everyone is just thinking. 
well, what's stopping that from happening here? Um, well, but I, I, I'd put this question back to you, Luca. So how would, how would you see what you're talking about be incorporated into um, the the current systems. I mean, Ian was sort of saying, you know, you want to get rid of the Senate or whatever. But I mean, are you talking no, no, about? No, I, 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 did I did I say that? I must have been. I must have been one of those late nights. <laughs> but I mean, are you really sort of saying that we should just be uh, using citizens' juries as a way of going out and um, capturing people's views? I mean, to me, the the beauty of citizens' juries isn't what they come up with. It's actually the fact that you give people an opportunity with a blank piece of paper to get informed about an issue and and to actually consider it. And, you know, this is my frustration as, you know, a, an alleged purveyor of information that we've got so much more capacity to uh, access information, but um, a, a, a reduced um, preparedness, I think, um, and and certainly in the media, a reduced capacity to actually encapsulate arguments so that people can actually see, you know, what the various issues at play are. Yeah, but you know, <clears throat> I, I I've said it before and I'll say it again. Democracy, in my mind, is principally about social cohesion. So. Yes, it's important to understand what is a good outcome, what is right, but nothing is right that is not agreed upon by the community at large. That is democracy for me. And I think the way we, we go about affecting that, public tr that trusted public decision currently is just, it's, it's stupid, it's mindless, because we are not actually promoting collaboration from the start we're actually exacerbating it by this by this positioning so yes Laura y yes citizen juries can clearly do public judgment as an as a complement to existing political class supplementing their, their thoughts about what the community really want but I would see them just as the way the Greeks originally had it uh, it at the very heart of the body politic, so that they are the ones that are seen as the trusted political class. They are the ones that are representative of the community at large. They are the ones that, that uh, are coming, uh, are trying to achieve, achieve social cohesion with, with good public decision making. How do you affect that in an institutional framework? Well, we say, let's first ha let's have a citizens' convention to discuss how we might do government better. And in that process, we would suggest, you know, put a citizen senate up as a straw man, see what people think about that. And, you know, if it kind of works and people are, uh, like the idea, trial a citizen senate. I mean, now we're actually doing in Geelong, 100 people were enlisted as a citizen jury to, to, to deliberate on how to reconstitute their council and are now coming up with aspirational models as to how a council could be elected differently than a normal way. And, and, and I see exactly that happening at, around the country in, in local government areas where people can see those processes really taking form institutionally. Mm. See, I suppose one of my problems with this is that um, despite everything, I don't think that, I mean, you know, this is what the parliament is supposed to do. and. Um, and it actually, on a lot of things, works a lot better than most people see. And, and I think that's particularly the case in the Senate. Um, uh, I mean, I, I've often defended the crossbench, whoever it is, because having stayed in Canberra for too long, I've seen a lot of people come to Canberra who look really badly qualified for the job and let's face it some of them look like nut jobs but uh, but they turn out to be incredibly good legislators for all the reasons you're talking about um, uh, most of you probably don't remember Len Harris who ended up being the lone one nation senator in um, I think the mid 2000s uh, Ricky Muir from the Motoring Enthusiasts Party the Senate and the Parliament if uh, at their best give the people who come in as legislators, this access to this amazing, you know, sort of 
uh, tidal wave of information that they might not have otherwise had access to, and they respond brilliantly to it, and they become interested, they make very sensible, wise decisions, they don't scream at each other necessarily. Now, that gets lost along the way, and it's a real tragedy, and I think it is a, you know, a fault of the system, but you know, th th there is the scope there for that to happen. And uh, one of the reasons, that reasons I think it does happen in the Senate is because the House is so the House of Representatives is, is so adversarial and uh, and gladiatorial and all those sorts of things. The Senate, you know, sends most people to sleep when they watch it, but it actually does function as quite an effective chamber for these debates to go on.